Number three then from the 2015 New Hire Paper 1. Here we go then. Factorise a cubic expression given that you have this linear factor here. Four marks. Fairly straightforward. There's more of that. How would you demonstrate that? Because there are a variety of ways. Strictly speaking, you should really go by the wording of the question. If it said, show this as a factor, well, that means there's a division involved. You should actually divide it in and show the remainder zero. If it said, show that negative three is a root, then you should put that in and show the value of the expression comes to zero. But they are interchangeable because of that special case of the remainder theorem, which says that if this is a factor, then its root must be the root of the expression. Quite simply, if you've got some cubic expression and you factorise it, then if the value of that bracket comes to zero, the value of this whole thing must come to zero because it's a factor that's involved in a multiplication. So the two terms are equivalent. x minus 3 is a factor, or x equals negative 3 is a root. Well, I'll put that down here. x plus 3 is a factor means that x equals negative 3 is a root. Notice the way it derives. Negative 3 is the root of this linear expression. When x is negative 3, this comes to 0. So if that's a factor of this, and that comes to 0, then this whole thing should come to 0. So there are the two ways. You can divide it in, or you can check if the value of this is also 0 at negative 3. In fact, that's the way they start it off. It's a bit of a laborious way, and really you should do the division because it says it's a factor. So you should say, what's its um, remainder? So, what they've got for their first method, and usually the first method is the preferred one, but it certainly shouldn't really apply here, would be put negative 3 into this and see if it comes to 0. So you'd have to say negative 3 cubed minus 3 times negative 3 squared minus 10 times negative 3 plus 24. Does that come to 0? And it's paper 1, so you have to do this yourself. Well, that'll still be negative because it's an odd power, so it's negative 27. Again, that's 27 three nines, but there's one negative, that turning positive. So again, it's negative 27. That turns into positive 30. That's 24. So you've got 54 and negative 54. So in fact, that comes to zero. Oh, so now you can see that comes to zero, which means x plus 3 is a factor. Now, there'd be two marks there. One for knowing to use negative 3. In other words, one for having this sort of equivalent statement to this one, knowing to use negative 3, and then one for the test, getting 0. But not just getting 0, you have to have a linked statement. It's the two of these together. You can't leave it equal 0, or you can't just jump in with as a factor. That would be the second mark. The only thing is, if you do it this way, of showing that the value of that expression comes to 0, then you just have to start all over again for your actual factorisation. You're up a bit of a gum tree doing it this way. So we'll not. What you should do instead is, what they've got is method two, which I bet would be your first choice is, use synthetic division. Of course, you call that synthetic division, but primarily this table that you put down with these coefficients, the one, the negative three, the negative 10, and the 24, is actually an evaluation table Anything you feed into this will give you the value of this expression when fed that number. That's just a replication of another way of evaluating this. If you start with any number, just calling it x if you like, and you want to work out this whole expression for x, then you would say, right, start with x. Now what will I do? Take away 3, then multiply by x, then take away 10, and then multiply by x, so these powers all go up one now, and then add 24, and there you are, which is what you do here, putting in negative 3. You start whoop, with negative 3, you subtract the 3 from it, you multiply by the x, you add the negative 10, you multiply by the x again, the negative 3, and then you add the 24. It's actually an evaluation table. It's just that it also doubles up conveniently as 
a synthetic division table in that it gives the same figures you would obtain if you did the division properly, which is another way of showing that it divides in. However, you probably just think, right, synthetic division, you get a zero at the end, but don't just do that box off and underline and leave it and say, there you are, you'd have to make the same statements. But this time, since you're using it as a synthetic division, you should say, well, that's the remainder. So if the remainder is zero, then that means that's a factor. So you'd make this statement. Remainder equals zero. That means that x plus three is a factor. Again, it has to be the two together to get that mark. And again, knowing to use negative three, knowing this thing here, knowing to use negative three was the other mark. There's two marks. So now you can carry on with your factorization. That means that this was equal to x plus three. And these three numbers here then give the coefficients of the resulting quadratic. That would be x squared minus six x plus eight. Notice you're not equal to zero because it wasn't an equation to begin with. Not that you'd be penalised according to the marking scheme if you did, but you shouldn't. Factorising that will give you the last part, sorry, that's a mark for extracting that part, knowing that that would be the quotient when dividing by this, knowing that that would form the other factor, the quadratic factor. And then factorising this, well, it must be x times x, multiply to give eight and add to give six, that's two and four. The negative of the middle term goes to the larger one, but that says they're both the same anyway. And there's the final mark. Now, there was one other way, which instead of using the evaluation table as a synthetic division table, you could actually carry out the division properly and say, what do I get if I divide that into this expression? In other words, doing it like a long division properly. Well, just like long divisions, you start with the highest column values. So I start with the x cubed. How many of these can I get into x cubed? Well, I should be able to get x squared of them in. x squared times that makes that. So there's an x squared. Multiply it out to see how many that makes. That's x cubed plus 3x squared. And then, just like in division, subtract it to see what's left over. Remember, top take away bottom, that's minus 6x squared. You carry that on to the next column, or rather bring that down, because there's no room to do that, and you start again. How many of these can I get into this? How many x's would it take to make negative 6x squared? That'd be minus 6x. Then you multiply it out, minus 6x squared, and that's minus 18x. And as before, subtract it to see what's left over. Top, take away bottom. Negative 10 plus 18 is 8x. Bring the next column down and start again. How many of these does it take to make this? Well, x to make 8x would be 8, so plus 8. And that gives you 8x plus 24 exactly. In other words, it's remainder 0. So you'd make your same statements. You would say the remainder is 0, so it's a factor. And there you've got the two parts. That divides into this exactly that time. So this times this makes that. And then factorise the quadratic yourself. But you wouldn't do this. No, you would just stick to your synthetic division. This is something you might do later on in advanced higher, for instance. This is something you would have to do if it wasn't a simple little linear expression that you were dividing in. If it was a quadratic, for instance, you would have to do this.